Hello YouTube, Sidekick here in my trusty F4E for another weapons tutorial. Today is the second part of the tutorial on Hydrag Bombs. We already went through a way of using Hydrag Bombs in direct mode. Today we're going to look at using them in laydown mode. So I'm going to go through this in a way similar to what I've done before. I'm going to go through how to do it, and then I'll go back and start again and explain why it works this way. Uh, and also why um, you would use this method instead of the method of using direct mode. Now, by the way, the basic answer to the first question is that this is the method you would want to use when you have to use a full low-level ingress to the target. Um, the direct method um, assumed that you could get up a little high and see the target and then make a shallow dive. This is going to assume that you have to stay low during the whole approach to the target. Now, on this run, I'm going to show you how it works, and I am going to make it a bit easier on myself by assuming that my low-level ingress is only necessary for, say, the last few nautical miles. In truth, in, let's say, a real Cold War scenario, that might not be realistic. You might need to stay low for your entire uh, transit to the target. Um, we'll talk about what would be realistic and how to practice that in DCS, but for now, uh, let's just get the basics right. So here we are uh, just getting lined up on a target for a run. Now you can see that I am really trying to find the target, those white buildings. I'm trying to get lined up on that. Once I do that, I'll stop and I'll show you how I'm going to set up the jet. There they are, finally found them. Uh, let's roll out, get lined up on them. And once we're set there, put it in air to ground. Okay, now let's talk about how to set up the jet. So the first thing we have to do is go to the, uh, the bombing table, control B, set it up for laydown mode. And then we have to select our Mark 82 snake eyes, make sure we don't select the low drag version of those. Our ingress speed is going to be 500 knots. And our altitude is going to be 500 feet. And our, the target is about 50 feet. I think it's about 50 feet. And um, let's set the IP range in feet. Now, I'm not setting the IP range based on a known feature. I'm setting the IP range based on the uh, reticle setting that I want, which is 95 mils. So I'm just going to keep tuning this until I get the the right um, reticle depression. The, the basic idea is you don't want the, the advantage of this over direct method is that if I was using direct I'd have a much lower number there in uh, in the number of mills and so the site would be much farther down the screen and I'd be much closer to the target when I had to pick it up. This way I can pick up the target at a greater distance and then uh, pickle and hold. Now let's just make sure we get everything set up correctly here. Uh, we do have the three pylons selected. I haven't put master arm on yet. Do that in a sec once we get restarted. Uh, we're using bombs and we're in lay down or L mode. I'm using salvo setting and I'm just putting a little bit of a delay on them. And I've also got the, uh, the uh, HSI set to follow the nav computer, which is going to be important. And we're in air to ground, and I said I wanted 95 degree or 95 mils on the reticle. So I think we have the jet set up. So let's continue the run in now. So now again, the trick is going to be trying to stay lined up on that target as we ingress. All right, let's get started. So here we go again. Now. What I want is for that to be my... Okay, turn point. Okay, that's what I was waiting for. So, gesture's got it set as the turn point. So now my HSI needle should be centered if I'm on the target, and I am on the target, and I am centered. So now even when I lose sight of the target, I can just fly the needle. That's what I wanted to do, is confirm that the needle was good. You can't always assume that your INS is accurate, unfortunate, in the F4E, but at this point, we can, uh, we can believe it. So now I'm just watching the HSI... I'm watching the altimeter and I'm watching the uh, airspeed indicator a little. Now I'm watching the HSI a lot because I need to keep the needle in the middle but I also need to keep the wings level um, and or the nose level I should say 
and I really need to keep the altitude uh, at or close to 500 feet while also keeping the jet level, which is a little bit of a trick. And then I have to not forget to see the target coming, by the way. And when the pickle is over it, the pipper's over it, I pickle and hold. Bombs go when the computer tells them to. And we can pull off and take a look. I come around the corner a little bit further. Even a little bit further than that. And that looks like a pretty good run. Just a sec, we'll wait for the target impact tracking script results here to see exactly what our parameters were when we dropped those. But I think, uh, I think I managed to hit them pretty good. Yeah, some pretty good parameters there. And really, it was a lot of flying the needles. Uh, I was really spending most of my time inside the cockpit, uh, which seems to be the key. Now, uh, so that was a good run. So let's go back to the start of this run and talk a little bit about how we got here. So I guess the first question is, what are we doing here a second time? I mean, I already showed um, how to do high drag bombing. Why am I showing two different ways of accomplishing the same mission, just for extra options? Uh, not really. Uh, to see why, I think we need to consider the point of using high drag bombs, or the points of using high drag bombs, because there's kind of different rationale. You know, basically use high drag bombs simply because you need to get close to your target. Um, you know, the point of high drag bombs is to ensure that if you drop them from low level, you won't do yourself harm. But why do we want to drop bombs from low level? And actually, I think there's a couple of different reasons we might have, and it drives very different mission scenarios. The first reason would be accuracy, or maybe more to the point, limiting inaccuracy. Uh, and this, I think, is what really drove the riot widespread use of so-called snake and nape in close air support missions in Vietnam. The fact of the matter was that the average U.S. pilot simply wasn't accurate enough to use dive bombing delivery to give troops on the ground confidence in letting them use this method, at least not in the troops near vicinity. I mean, apparently studies were done that showed that the average accuracy of bomb drops in Vietnam was pretty awful, like several hundred feet, and that was the average. And believe me, if you're the guy on the ground, you are way more interested in the standard deviation than the average. I mean, if you know what I mean, like nobody wants to be within the three sigma range of an intended target when a pilot has a statistically bad day, right? In other words, uh, there was a strong desire to make sure that even if the pilot missed, they, didn't, uh, they did not miss by more than a certain amount. And there was a desire for the inaccuracy to be constrained to be along the delivery axis and to have that axis aligned parallel to the forward line of own troops. In other words, fly across in front of me at a known range, and if you don't hit the target when you do that, at least you can't hit me. So, in that scenario, the objective was to get close to the target Basically, so A, pilots could identify it, B, uh, your forward air controller to make sure that you were on the right target before he cleared you hot, and C, if you missed, it wasn't going to be by that much, even in the worst case. Now, by the way, it also had the collateral benefit of impressing enemy troops in the target area. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the effect of being overflown by an F-4 at 500 feet is likely to have a suppressive effect, even if they're not dropping bombs. But that's the Vietnam scenario, the one that we practiced in the last video. It's not what we're doing today. Today we're practicing what I would call the Cold War scenario. In this mode, we assume, first of all, that the target is fairly large and fairly obvious and that it's not a danger close scenario. We also assume that the target location is well known and has been provided to us ahead of time on the tarmac. On the other hand, we can expect a fully layered integrated air defense system, which means that we really do want to avoid detection for as long as possible, which means operating at low level, even well back from the target, in order to avoid being illuminated by a search radar, or if we're doing a deep strike mission, to avoid being intercepted by air defenses between us and the target. So in this case, we have to fly low, not to get close to the target, but to stay below the detection horizon of the enemy air defenses. This different rationale drives a very different approach. The limitation of this approach, as we saw in the last run, by the way, is that lining up on the target uh, from any distance while you're only 500 feet above the ground is not at all an easy problem to solve, particularly if you don't have a HUD and you have an INS that drifts. 
And so we're back where we started this run and going through exactly the same problem, trying to get lined up on the target. Now, this means I'm higher than I would really want to be for a full low-level ingress. But I need to be able to confirm uh, that my INS is accurate. Now, I could do this without confirming that. I could have just flown this um, and just trusted that I'd get the INS right. But like I said, that's a little bit of a high-stakes role uh, in the F-4, especially if you've been flying for a while. So anyhow, we're basically doing, we're doing the same run we did last time, just so you can see it again. And again, I'm watching the needles. I'm really spending a lot of time watching the needles as well as get my master arm on. Uh, I'm watching my HSI particularly because I got to stay level and I got to keep the, the line in the middle. Uh, and I need to be easing my altitude down to 500, but not let the nose come down. Then I got to see the target. And see the target. I gotta wait for the pipper to be on the target. Don't dive at the target when you see it. That's a real temptation. Hold it level, hold it level, hold it level, bombs go. And away we go. Just like last time. So, as I said, overall that was a pretty good drop. But like I said, we cheated a little because we did a line um, at an altitude higher than 500 feet. So let's go take a look at another scenario where we're actually gonna stay low the whole time. Okay, here we are, still in the range, out over the water, reasonably low, but we're going to stay get, get even lower. Our target is going to be an artillery battery that's on the right-hand side of the range. Now, we know where the artillery battery is. Let's say those are coordinates that were passed to us by, say, the ground forces uh, who've located it. Now, we also have smoke, uh, a smoke mark on the artillery. Let's say it's already been attacked by something, so hopefully there's a mark on the horizon. We don't have to have the smoke mark, but I think in this case with a small target hidden in the woods, it's pretty much essential for us to be able to use that for final alignment. If your target was big and easy to identify from low level, um, uh, from some distance, then you could probably do it just from, uh, just from the map mark. But we're going to use both just so we can make sure that we get close. And I'm looking at my ADI and my HSI, my two needles, trying to uh, figure out when I should be lined up. And once I should be lined up, I'll start looking for the smoke on the horizon to confirm that my nav system is taking me to the right place. And it should be right about there, and I think I see where I'm supposed to be going, so I'm dropping into air-to-ground mode. And I'm getting low, and now I'm actually just doing the same old thing. I'm flying the needles. I need to get to 500 knots, 500 feet, level flight, aimed at the target. As I get closer to the target, I'm hoping to be able to actually identify the vehicles on the ground so that I can uh, line up on them rather than just using uh, my uh, needles and, and using the smoke mark. And again, like I said, if I could identify these things farther away, uh, then I wouldn't need the smoke. I might even have been able to do it without the smoke, but it just made it easier in this case. And then once I see the vehicles coming up, I just need to figure out where to pickle to start dropping bombs across this artillery battery. Right about there. Now, unfortunately, I, I, I got a little target fixated. I dived on the target a little bit, lost some altitude. That might affect the accuracy of the bombs. But I don't think it's going to be too bad. Now, you can assume a target like this, it wouldn't just be me. Probably be a two-ship or a four-ship, really trying to plaster this artillery battery. But even as it is, I think we did a pretty good job. So, that's a way of doing uh, high drag bombing. Uh, from low level, from a complete low level ingress pass, as opposed to being able to pop up and identify your target. I uh, hope you enjoyed that video, and for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.